Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today, guys, we're reacting to you guys' most overrated player and most underrated player of all time. This should be very interesting, guys. We have a lot of comments to go through, guys. So please remember to uh, like and subscribe. You know, if you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments below. I'm I think I'm going to do this once a month for you guys. So once a month, I will be asking a random topic, and I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. So to get you guys more involved, because you guys seem to like more community-based videos and that kind of stuff. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first one we got here. It's from Pookie5198 says, underrated, Danny Carvajal. Okay, let me start with this one. I do think Carvajal is underrated. When people think of the best right backs in the world, people don't really mention Danny Carvajal. I think he's extremely underappreciated. And I've even been saying this as a rival fan. You know, I think Danny Carvajal for me is one of the most criminal, uh, one of the most underrated right backs of all time. And I think he has to be up there. You know, the work I think he's had, the consistency he's had, amazing and yeah for me danny carvajal i agree i actually agree next up overrated fabio cannavaro Ooh, okay now this my trigger this might be surprising to some people now personally for me i i don't really know too much about fabio cannavaro i know he's been talked about very highly i know he's one of the best defenders of all time when people talk about him but I just think that for me, is he over? Like, let's let us let us look at his profile, guys. Let's actually do a quick Google search. So you can see Fabio Cannavaro. Let's look at his uh, let's look at his um his page, man. So as you can see right here, man, um, uh, he's played. He's had seventy four appearances and six goals. Now I'm not going to look at goals because remember he has a center back, so that's not really important. But the, the key thing is that Parma. And let's look at his accolades. Obviously. He won the World Cup, 2006. So you could probably make an argument that he might be a bit overrated as a defender. You know, I think he may not be as good of a defender as he uh, as people talk about, but he's definitely one of the best defenders, um, uh, best defenders Italy's ever had. You know, people will argue maybe Nesta's better. People maybe argue that um, Baresi's better. But yeah, I think Canavaro is definitely one. Okay, so then Ghost. Um, Ghost I didn't. Uh, Ghost wanted me to comment for him, so let's just go over his. So he picked underrated is KDB. Mm, uh, no, I don't think KDB is underrated of all time. I feel like KDB is a good player. Like, let's be real. He has had a great resume. Of, obviously, he's a Premier League legend. You know, you can make argument he's one of pre uh, the Premier League's best players of all time, midfielders. I don't think he is underrated, though. I don't think he is. Um... And for me, my biggest issue with KDB is that uh, I think for him to be in consideration for all time, he needs to do more. He needs to do something with Belgium. I think if we can do something with Belgium, guide them to a World Cup, guide them to a Euros, could be amazing. And obviously, you know, if we can um, win Man City another Champions League and be present in the final. Because that's another thing that's also been kind of weird is that he's never he's not got to play a full Champions League final. And it's two Champions League finals he's made it in. He's been injured both games. So can KDB actually make a Champions League final without being injured in the final? So, yeah. Overrated, Gareth Bale. Uh, I don't think... Is Gareth Bale overrated, guys? Is Gareth Bale overrated? You can make an argument. Now, actually, I want to look at Gareth Bale's statistics. I want to see how he's done as a... I want to see how he's, how he's done. Because Gareth Bale, for me, has been amazing. I think Gareth Bale, for me... Honestly, I don't think he's overrated. I mean, 144 goals, 394 appearances, 41 goals for Wales. No, nah, I don't think he. Is, I don't think he is overrated. I don't think he is. And remember, this is a guy that. Okay, this is a guy that's always been clutch in the big games. He is a big game player. Sure, he may not be consistent throughout the season, but in terms of big games, he's always showed up. He's always showed up. I mean, look at the Copa del Rey final. Look at the Champions League final 2018. The guys have been clinical in big games. So, yeah, for me, nah, I don't, I don't think Gareth Bale's overrated. I don't think he is. In fact, I would actually argue he's more underrated than overrated. I would actually make argument. Okay, next up it is Sage. It says underrated Aspilicueta. Okay, that's a, that's an interesting shot. Aspilicueta is definitely underrated. When people think about uh, center backs and um, center backs, he's never really talked about as much, you know. Actually, he's more of a right back, to be fair. Right back, I think, is his main position. Uh, but yeah, I mean, actually, what's uh, what's Aspel Quid's main position? Is it center back or right back? Let's see. Let's look at the mind. He's mostly known for it says a defender. Okay, let's look, look at the transfer market. I know he can play both positions, but what is his main? I forgot that at the top of my head. Let's see. 
I mean, his main position is a right back. His main position is a right back. So for me, yeah, I mean, Aspilicueta for me, he's definitely underrated. I, I I actually agree with Sage on this one. Overrated KDB. Yeah, we just talked about KDB. I think KDB for me, he's done amazing for Manchester City in the Premier League. I think his Premier League legacy is amazing. He just needs to do more. He just needs to do something with Belgium and maybe do something in the Champions League. Maybe can have like, maybe get score in the Champions League final, potentially, and maybe win it. Uh, but yeah, KDB, you can make an argument. Overrated, Edison Cavani. Uh, Bulgarian map it. Uh, I don't think Cavani's really overrated. I, I don't think he is. I mean, I feel like he's been, um, he's been a good player. I mean, let's, let, let's, I mean, how highly do people look at Edson, Edison Cavani? I mean, looking ahead his statistics and everything. I mean, he has a striker. I know he's been a great, obviously he's mostly known for his PSG time, but he's also been, he was also amazing in Napoli. So let's not forget. And Napoli, he was great at PSG. So, as you can see right here, guys, so we got in 200 appearances, he's got 138 goals and 52 appearances, 69 goals. And remember, he was on loan spell as well. Now, I don't think Cavani's overrated. I don't think he is. I don't know why Bulgarian Map would say he is overrated. Where do you get that from? Because for me, he's actually, actually, I would probably argue he's more underrated than overrated. I would probably argue, like, he's just been that great, man. I mean, like, let's look at his entire, how many goals he scored and 393 goals and 704 appearances. And looking at Uruguay, 58 goals and 36, 136 appearances is pretty good, man. It's pretty good, I got to say. Um, So, yeah, for me, uh, for Edson, Edison Cavani, no, I don't think he's overrated. I would actually argue he's more underrated than overrated. And underrated Vintage, I don't think Vintage is really underrated. I think people respect Vintage. Um, I think he's definitely um, a center back that people highly respect. Now, maybe people should respect him more because I do hear that when people talk about best center backs, people talk about, Ferdinand more people talk about John Terry more uh, but Vintage is never really in that conversation which I find to be surprising so maybe you could say in that sense he deserves more recognition um, but yeah actually you know what I kind of a somewhat a kind of partially agree but I wouldn't fully agree because I do feel like people do talk about Vintage a lot and I do think he is one of the best but I think more people talk about Ferdinand and Terry more than Vintage so yeah I can see where you're coming from uh, Sammy Keona says overrated David Beckham Oh, yeah, David Beckham, man. David Beckham is an interesting show because, obviously, David Beckham, he's a great player now. Obviously, he's a fantastic player. But the issue with David Beckham is that he's never really – he was just really good at set pieces. That's what made him so special because when it came to goal scoring and it came to consistency, he just wasn't really it. I mean, I just, let me actually look at the statistics. I actually want to look at this real quick. So, David Beckham. David Beckham. Obviously, he's one of the most famous players of – um. Uh, one of the most famous ones. Yeah, he's one of the best free kick takers of all time. And yeah, I think when people th think of him, Manny, they, they just remember him so much. Uh, look at this. So as you can see right here, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not that great, guys. It's not that great. 16 goals and 43 appearances. That was his best goal scoring mark. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that great, guys. 129 goals and 719 appearances. Yeah, I think what David Beckham is mostly known, like I said, David Beckham is mostly known for his set pieces. He was very good at set pieces, especially free kicks. But the issue is, besides besides set pieces, I just don't think he was that amazing as a player as people make him out to be. So, yeah, I do kind of agree with you. David Beckham is overrated. I, I think I actually agree with Sammy Keone on this one. Andre Raquel May. Raquel May, man. I mean, Juan Raquel May, man. I think, yes, I agree. I agree with this 100%. Juan Raquel May is one of the most underrated players of all time. I mean, the guy has been amazing, man. Juan Ra Ra Raquel May, man. Now, when you look at... His, I mean, because when you look at his statistics and everything, there's a 150 goals and 596 appearances. It's not special. But when you actually watch the guy play, he's amazing on the ball. His dribbling, his playmaking, his ball playing ability has been amazing. It's just the sad thing is that he just didn't win anything significant with Argentina. That's the issue. He didn't win anything significant. I can guarantee you, if he won like a World Cup or maybe a Copa America, he would regard it higher regard, you know? And it's just a shame, man, because Raquel May, for me, is one of the most um, underappreciated players. And I think the guy, football and ability-wise, has been amazing. So, yeah, Raquel May, I actually agree with Sammy Keone 100% on this one. Uh, next up is Conan Guam. It says, underrated Mandzukic. Yeah, I think Mandzukic is underrated. Because people don't people forget what he did in 2018 World Cup final, guys. 2018 World Cup, Mandzukic was amazing. He scored those crucial goals to get Croatia to the World Cup final. Obviously, I know a lot of people are going to give Modric the more, uh, uh, more appreci appreciation and everything. 
But I would actually argue Mandzukic was just as important as Modric. Maybe you could even argue more important. You know, and obviously remember, Mandzukic scored in the Champions League final 2017. Sure, the Juventus lost the game. Real Madrid still won the game 4-1. But you got you can't take anything away from Mandzukic. So that was a big, big moment. He's always been a big game player. And yeah, for me, Mario Mandzukic for me is underrated. And I actually want to look at his t- t- statistics right here. I actually want to look at this real quick. Because for me, Mario Mandzukic is under underrated. So let's go look at his statistics. You can see 166 goals and 426 appearances and 33 goals and 89 appearances for Croatia. So, yeah, I think Mandzukic for me is just underrated. I mean, look at his time at the different clubs, like, you know, Dinamo Zagreb, then obviously a Bayern, Atletico, Juventus. Like, the guy has just been amazing when it comes to big games. Now, sure, he may not be as consistent as those other guys. Like, you when you look at his goal scoring tally, it's not the best. But the guy's always been good in big games. I think that's what Mandzukic is known for, is that he is such a big game player. And remember, his time at Bayern Munich was amazing. I think Bayern Munich was probably the best uh, best for him in his career. But yeah, I mean, Mandzukic for me, man. What a player, man. What a player that is. I mean, look, he scored three goals. Three goals to get Croatia to runners up. So yeah, Mandzukic for me, definitely a good shot. Overrated. Now, this is an interesting one. Didier Drogba. Didier Drogba, guys. Didier Drogba. Guys, is Drogba overrated? Because when you look at his statistics and everything... Now, don't get me wrong. Drogba is an amazing player. <laughs> he is an amazing player. Obviously, he is one of Ivory Coast's best players of all time. But the fact that Ivory Coast won the AFCON without him is crazy. As well as the fact... Yeah, the, the fact Ivory Coast won the AFCON without him is just sad. Now, when you look at his goal-scoring season, guys, he's not really that good. It's really not. He only had two amazing seasons, 2009-2010 and 2006-2007. That's the only two seasons where he scored more than 30 goals. Every other season has either been, you know, uh, less than 20, which is really sad. Because I do think Drogba is a good player. I, I There's no denying that. He's obviously an incredible player. Obviously, he, he's the reason why Chelsea won the first ever Champions League in their history, 2012. You have to give him that credit. But the issue is, would he be regarded the same? Like, let's say hypothetically, let's say Chelsea did win that Champions League. Would he, we be would we regard him in the same regard as now? Probably not. So that's why I'm saying that that one goal has changed his entire Chelsea career. But you can't take anything away from him is that the guy has been good at big games. I think he is a big game player, but consistency-wise, it just isn't it, man. Consistency-wise, it just isn't it. So, yeah. Drogba for me, man. I do agree with Conan. He is overrated. Now, is he the most overrated all the time? That is debatable. But that's why I asked you guys. So, yeah. Okay, next up. It is SDB Kule says, for me, most overrated is Modric. Uh, no, I don't agree. I don't agree. I think our players are more overrated than Modric. Now, I do think Modric is kind of somewhat a l- little bit overrated. Um... But I don't think Modric is the most overrated. I think that's really, really harsh. Um, I think he's still a great player. He's still an amazing player. Um, obviously, one of Real Madrid's best ever midfielders of all time, I would probably make argument. And yeah, the most underrated player is Busquets. Meh, uh, well, I see where you're coming from because I do think Busquets is underrated. But I don't think he's the most underrated player of all time. I don't think he is. Now, because when people talk about that Barca team and midfield-wise, Busquets hardly gets any talk about it. Everyone talks about Xavi. Everyone talks about Iniesta. Even people talk more about Rakitic. People hardly talk about Busquets. For those Champions League wins, people hardly talk about Busquets. So I understand what you mean, uh, Esri Kule. I understand what you mean. But I don't think he's the most underrated of all time. But I I, I kind of see what you mean. I, I think I see what you mean. TTNS, so he says, underrated Danny Carvel, overrated Didier Drogba. I already went through those two players, so you could just go back and see what it said. So, yeah. Uh, Black Warrior says, overrated Xavi. Oh, Xavi, man, Xavi. Is Xavi overrated? Because what Xavi is really known for is his, uh, his passing. He's really, really good with passing. And I believe when people say who's better, Iniesta or Xavi, I think more people lean towards Iniesta. I think more people prefer Iniesta over Xavi. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's the most overrated of all time. You can maybe make an argument, but I feel like Xavi's just that good of a player. I mean, he's that amazing of a player, man. That midfield duo he had with him and Iniesta, amazing, man, amazing. So, 
I can kind of see what you mean, Balkan, because I don't feel I feel like he is a, a, maybe a little bit, but I don't think he is like the most overrated of all time. I think that's crazy. Underrated Jekko. I fully agree with this one. Jekko for me is completely underrated. I mean, look what he did at Manchester City. He got them to win the first Premier League title. Look what he did with Roma. I know he didn't really achieve much with Roma, but, you know, still, he's a Roma legend. And now look who he's done with Inter. He's now got them to a Champions League final and got them to win the, um, the Scudetto this season. So, actually, no, that was like, he wasn't there this season. I just realized he left. But still, he played a vital role in that. So, let's actually look at Jekko, man. Let's actually look at Ed and Jekko, man. I actually want to look at this right here. Ed and Jekko. Ed and Jekko. Okay, so let's go look at Ed and Jekko, guys. Let's look at it, his time at um his career, man. His career. Okay, so Ed and Jekko. Looking at right here, career statistics. As you can see right here, guys. Yeah, Jekko, man. Amazing, man. Amazing. I mean, luckily we do in the Manchester City. He also played with Wolfsburg as well. Keep in mind. And then obviously Roma in the Inter. And yeah, I mean, look what he's done with Farron Bocce this season. So yeah, 360 goals, 846 appearances. 65 goals, 134 points. And he, oh, wow. He even won the Bundesliga with Wolfsburg. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's just a shame. I wish he was there for Inter this season because then he would have won a league title everywhere he's gone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, Jekyll for me. Yes, definitely underrated. Definitely underrated. Definitely underrated. For sure. Okay, next up it is um, APEG100. It says underrated Xabi Alonso. Yeah, Xabi Alonso for me. Um, what he's done as a player has been amazing. You know, I feel like when people talk about, um, uh, people talk about Xabi Alonso, because when people talk about the Spain team, guys, it's, uh, people talk about the golden generation of Spain, they don't really talk about Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso was amazing for that team. I mean, look at his, look, look at his career. Statistics. He played for Real Sociedad, scored 10 goals, 124 appearances, 19 goals for Liverpool, and then six goals for Real Madrid, and then nine goals. And yeah, I mean, the guy has just been amazing, man. And remember, he's a center mid after the day, so don't even look at the goals like this, right? But I was just showing you guys the clubs he's played for, it, the consistency he's had. So, yeah, for me, Xavi Alonso is actually kind of underrated. And I actually agree with um, Apex. He's underrated because he was also part of that trio, that um, part of that team that won the three, uh, the two Euros and one World Cup, you know, probably the Spain greatest dynasty. And now look where he's on Leverkusen. He's got them to win the Bundesliga undefeated and could potentially be on for an undefeated trouble. So, yeah, for me, uh, definitely underrated player. And, I, I, yeah, I, I think I actually agree. I think he is definitely underrated. I think he is definitely underrated. Overrated Holland. Yes, I actually agree. I actually agree. Holland is overrated. Now, it's not to say Holland is a bad player or anything like that. He is a great goal-scoring player. Obviously, his goal-scoring metrics are insane. My biggest issue with Holland, though, is that he's very wasteful in the final third. I've seen a lot of chances Holland miss. Also, I also know is that Holland isn't good at big games. Holland isn't that great in big games, guys. He just isn't. So, yeah, I actually agree with this one. Uh, Shreyo69 says, underrated Lucas Paqueta. Uh, I don't think Lucas Paqueta is underrated. I feel like he's fairly rated, to be fair. Um, but you can maybe make an argument, potentially. Let, let's see what he does for Brazil. I think, I'll tell you what, guys. If he can perform for Brazil in this year's Copa America and, you know, do really well. Because I remember the last Copa America, he was cooking. He was amazing the last Copa America. I remember it's 21. He was fantastic. So, Maybe if it could do it, because let's be real, guys. Paqueta is under, he is a good player, but how underrated is he? You know, so that's the thing, man. Because remember, he's been good for West Ham this season, man. So, yeah, and the overrated killing of Bappe, yeah, you can make an argument. You can make an argument that Bappe is overrated. I mean, look what he's done right now in his career. He's just known for that World Cup 2018. And my thing with Mbappe is that you can have a great international career, but you got to do something club career wise. And let's be real, guys. I still have this firm belief that Mbappe won't be the main guy at Real Madrid. He'll be like the side guy. And for me, that isn't going to do much. So for me, if Mbappe, because Mbappe has to be the main guy at Real Madrid for me to take those Champions League seriously. Because if Mbappe just gets like five Champions League without playing a significant part, then I'm not going to be like, okay, I'll be like, okay, you go on those Champions Leagues, but I'm not going to rate you that highly because you didn't really play a large contribution. So Mbappe, you now have to win a Champions League. You have to win the Champions League, especially as the main guy. If you want to be talked about as one of the goats, you know, and I think because I do feel like Mbappe has the potential to be a future goat, but he has to take his club career seriously. And he need, because like just having one World Cup is not going to be enough. You need to win a few Champions Leagues and be that main guy at your Real Madrid. Varun, 
Uh, 1782 says underrated Puska slash Stefano. Uh, I feel like they're not really underrated. I feel like they're talked about, um, but they're just not talked about enough, maybe. Uh, because obviously those players are from our, uh, from not, not from our age, obviously from our, um, what was called back in the day, but yeah, you can maybe make an argument, but yeah, I mean, I think for these two players, they've achieved amazing stuff, you know, at their respective clubs and yeah, overrated Arturo Vidal, uh, is Arturo Vidal overrated? I don't really hear people talk about Arturo Vidal like that, man. I, I really don't. Uh, I'm I actually I'm actually curious what makes you think uh, Arturo Vidal is overrated because I feel like he's fairly rated. I don't think he's really overrated or underrated. Sebastian AK1891 says underrated Ivan Zamora. Okay, so let's actually look this guy up because I actually have never heard this guy before. Never heard this guy before. So I actually want to look him up. So Ivan Zamora. Okay, so it's a Chile player. He's actually recognized as one of Chile's most recognized players. Okay, I should have known that then. I feel stupid now. But, you know, you learn something new every day, right? So this is something I never knew about. Yeah, so Marcelo Saliz, Le Leon Sanchez, Ellis Figueroa. Okay, let's see what clubs he played for. So he played for Inter, he played for Real Madrid, played for Sevilla. Okay, those are big clubs. And then played for Club America, Colo Colo. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I You can make an argument, um, Sebastian. I, I'm not going to argue you too much because I don't really know this player too well. Uh, but judging for the statistics, he looks he looks pretty he looks pretty underrated. And yeah, I don't think he's talked about enough. I mean, there's a reason why I never heard of him. So yeah, I I feel like for me he has to be up there. He has to be up there. And yeah, so he's definitely underrated. Uh, next to overall overrated Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I do feel like Ronaldo is kind of a little overrated to some extent, but I don't think he's the most overrated. I think most overrated is a bit of a stretch there. I think it's a bit of a stretch. But yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah. You can maybe make an argument, but I don't want to start a debate here in the channel, so I, I am I'm gonna move on from that. But Ronaldo is definitely not the most overrated player of all time. That is definitely for sure. Maybe a little bit overrated, but he's definitely not the most overrated player of all time. So that's that's definitely that's definitely I don't agree with Sebastian on that. Ranked ranked us was underrated one Raquel May. Okay, we just talked about Carlos Tevez. You know, we haven't talked about Carlos Tevez. Let's actually look at Carlos Tevez here, guys. Uh, Carlos Tevez, obviously, um, he's obviously, uh, people, he's obviously a very, is a good, good player, man. And yeah, man. So, wow. Carlos Tevez, man. So obviously what he's mostly remembered for is the fact that he betrayed Manchester City. Sorry, Manchester United by going to Manchester City. They're direct rivals. And that's what Manchester City, Manchester United fans still hold him to this day. They still hate him so much, despise him and everything. And it's understandable. Like if you play for your biggest rivals, you're not gonna be treated as that. You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna get a lot of slander. I know. So yeah, for me, you can make an argument because Tevez for me, like I said, he's just been a he's an incredible player, you know, profile powerful, hardworking, dynamic forward is prime. He's capable of playing striker, winger, supporting forward. Like I think in terms of talent, the guy's been amazing. And yeah, so I think it's been incredible, man. Uh been everything and yeah. So I mean look at let me look at his international career, man. But the thing is international wise just kind of a bit underwhelming. 2004, 2015, only 13 goals. Eh, that's a bit sad. I kind of expected more. But to be fair, Argentina those years weren't as good as we know they are. So I'm not am I gonna can I hold that too much? Oh wow. Didn't even win us. Yeah, it's just runners up. Runners up, man. So sad. So sad. Close to us. Okay. Next up is Zinedine Zidane. Now Zidane for me. So here's the thing with Zidane, guys. I was I I think I talked with my friend the other day. Zidane for me, in terms of a playing ability, in terms of um, in terms of that, he's definitely not overrated. Now in terms of what he could have achieved, yes, you can make an argument that he could have he should have been able to achieve more at Real Madrid Juventus because the fact that he's only won I think he said one league title and one Champions League is crazy. You expect Zidane to achieve more. But in terms of, like, as a player, I feel like Zidane is a great player. You can't take anything away from him. But in terms of career and what he could have achieved, yes, he could have achieved more. He could have achieved more. Uh, Yo Yo Master, Tax, Master Talks Fax says, uh, there's a lot, but here's some. Underrated Dejan Savisic. All right, let's go look at him up. So, obviously, as you can see right here, guys, he's a um, he's a attacking midfielder, and he's a, a, he was the president of Montenegro, okay? And looking at his career, okay, 135 goals and 346 appearances. Okay, decent. That's decent. And, yeah, so like I said, I don't really know too much about him. You know, this, I, this is probably the first time I'm hearing about him. So, um, you know, 
he is probably underrated in that sense. Uh, the David Janola. Uh, I don't know. Why is he overrated, though? I never heard of him. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, let me actually look at here. So, I guess David Janola. I mean, look. let's look at the statistics. Yeah, it's actually not that good, actually, to be fair. I mean, I think PSG is what he's most... So, PSG taught them. Those are, like, the two main clubs he played for. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he probably could have achieved more goal-scoring-wise. But yeah, I don't really know, man. I, can, I don't really know this player too well, so I can't really comment. But yeah, maybe he maybe could have done better goal scoring wise. Um, Tyre Joe, Joe Otoma says it's hard to pick the best underrated player of all time because there's so many. But overrated player, I would say Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard, man. I'm guessing you're whole, saying Steven Gerrard's overrated because he did win the Premier League with Met Liverpool, and you're gonna bring up the the slip, right? 2014. Um, I I don't think Gerrard's the most overrated. Maybe you could argue he's a bit overrated in the sense of what he did to achieve with England. But to be fair, the whole England golden generation thing, it's not really on him. It's the entire team, you know. Everyone failed. Like, Andrew Lampard failed. Gerrard failed. The entire England golden generation failed. So I'm not going to put them too much on him. So it depends what you mean, Tari. If you're looking specifically for international career, yes, I would agree. Gerrard did is overrated for international. But in terms of what he's achieved for Liverpool, no, I don't agree with you. He's he's He did everything he could for Liverpool. So, yeah, for me, no, I, I don't agree with that. But if you're specifically talking for England, yes, you can make arguments, actually. Abby Semi Games says underrated Jackson, Vardy, or Richarlison. Okay, let's just go through all three real quickly. Jackson, for me, I don't really rate him that highly. I think he's an okay player. Uh, he's decent. I don't think he's that amazing. Uh, and, yeah, so Jackson, for me, nah, nah he's not it. Man, the guy misses too many sitters, man. Come on. Vardio. Now, yes, you can make an argument Vardio is underrated, but here's the thing, guys. We already know how good Vardio is in the world. I think people know he's one of the best defenders in the world. So, yeah, I think Vardio for me, you can make an argument, actually. You know what? I think I actually agree with every seven. I actually think I agree. Richarlison, no. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Richarlison is not underrated. Richarlison, I'm sorry. The thing with Richarlison is that guy is just good at, like, scoring against teams you expect to beat. But when it comes times for teams you're not expected to beat, he just doesn't show up. He just doesn't show up. And I know people are going to bring up, oh, look what he did last season against Liverpool. He scored to make it 3-all. But guess what? They still lost the game later on, you know. So, yeah, for me, no, I don't agree with Charleston's underrated. I would say he's, is he overrated? I don't think he's really overrated. I think he's, like, fairly rated, I guess. Overrated Saka. Is Saka overrated, guys? Is Bukaya Saka overrated? Because I've been hearing a lot of people say Bukayo Saka's world class and everything like that and everything. For me, he's not world class. He isn't world class. Now, he is a good player. I think he is a great player. But for me, he isn't world class. I think world class for me, at least this is my definition of world class. My definition of world class is that you can, you can start for any team in the world. Any team in the world. And you can consistently perform. If you can start for any team in the world, you are world class. Does Saka start in every single team in the world? Does Saka start for Man City? Does Saka start for Real Madrid? Does Saka start for Bayer, Bayer Leverkusen? Probably not. Probably not. So I think I agree with FB7 in the sense that he is overrated, but not of all time. Not of all time. Because I think FB7 is doing currently. Uh, but yeah, I mean, currently maybe, but not all time. Latar Martinez. Yeah, Latar is also kind of a little overrated, I'll be honest. I mean, like, the guy is a great player. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to big games, man... Besides Milan, he's not really been that great in, you know. And we saw what he did in the World Cup, guys. I'm sorry, Lotaro. And if doing Alvarez wasn't that amazing, guys, I don't think RG would have won the World Cup with Lotaro as your starting striker. I don't think they would have. So RG is lucky they had Jun Alvarez. Because if they just had Lotaro as the main guy, I don't think they would have won the World Cup. I don't think they would have. So yeah, Lotaro, I could somewhat agree. Lewandowski. Yeah, Lewandowski. You can maybe make an argument. I mean, because the thing is, Lewandowski has been amazing. Like, goal scoring wise, has been great. But the one thing I've always held with Lewandowski, and I will continue to say this, the guy has not been great in the big Champions League games, especially in the knockout stage. I've always stated this with about him, and that's one thing that I'm going to never change my stance on. He's never been that great in the Champions League knockout stage, big games-wise. I know people bring up, oh, look what he did against Real Madrid. And I think it was 2013, the 4-1. Okay, besides Real Madrid and the 2013 Champions League, when else he's had a big, amazing game in the Champions League knockout stage? Tell me below in the comments, because I'm actually interested to know. 
So, yeah. Okay. All right. And then the final one we got here, it is, let me just put this a little bit upward. So the next one, it is Saritsa Versa 4966. Hopefully I didn't butcher that name. Let's go ahead and go through this one. Underrated Johan Cruyff. Yes, Johan Cruyff. Yes, I think Johan Cruyff is underrated. I think people when think when people talk about people, he just it just doesn't get much recognition. You know, he's the reason why football is as it is. You know, he's the reason why Barcelona is existing. He's the reason why we have this total possession based football. And yeah, for me, Johan Cruyff doesn't get enough appreciation. Doesn't get enough coach shouts. So yeah, for me, and also another thing is that his goals and assists isn't that great. You know. So, yeah, Johan Cruyff, I agree with. And overrated, I would say Holland right now. Don't get me wrong, he's really good. But he's not the next Ronaldo and Messi. Yeah, I already talked about Holland earlier in this video. So, there you guys go, man. This was a long video, man. 30 minutes, man. 30 minutes just going through your guys' comments, man. Going through your guys' comments. So, obviously, the next one we'll do is we'll be in June. You know, I'm recording this on May 20th. So, we'll try to do this another one in June. I'll probably try to do it before the tournaments begin. So, it's going to be interesting, guys, to see what happens. And I hope you guys did enjoy this long video. So please run a like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.